I welcome you on lesson 4. In this video lesson we speak about network layer of OSI model. And as you see the network layer is placed on layer 3. So in future every time when you hear the words like L3 then you have to immediately think about the network layer and its addressing and its protocols which you know. Before we spoke about you is about uh, seven, six, fifths and fourth layers, the last one being the transport layer. And in transport layer we describe it, the functionality of the two protocols like a TCP and IP, uh, TCP and UDP, I'm sorry. Uh, the TCP was the reliable protocol and the UDP is the fast protocol. What about the network layer? Four basic processes of the network layer. Network responsible for addressing. Network layer makes addressing. Uh, actually, we have different types of protocols, but uh, most uh, famous protocols are IP version 4 and IP version 6. The difference between them is uh, at least uh, we can just describe the difference of the length of the addressing. So we have in IP version 4. 32 bits which gives us to the power of 32 combinations of uh, available IP version 4 addresses and in IP version 6 we have to the power of 128 bits the difference is very huge one and uh, it's like uh, expected from IP version 6 that it will be quite enough for uh, for many 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 years and um, in future we will not change the protocols like we are changing it now from IP version 4 to IP version 6. Alright, next. Uh, network layer makes the encapsulation. Uh, and if we will take a look for this matryoshka one more time, so we can define that this matryoshka is the boss. And actually the boss is, um, is the data, as you remember. Why she is the boss? Because every other matryoshkas are working to transport the very important the boss. After what the boss is encapsulated into the uh, transport header and now the, it's becoming the, the segment and now you already know that according to different types of communication it can be segment or it can be the datagram. datagram. So if we are working with the the UDP protocol, then our uh, PDU, the protocol data unit, is called the datagram. In case when we are working with the, the TCP protocol, then um, our PDU is called the segment. The the slower but the reliable and the, the faster and not the reliable, non-reliable, or we can say unreliable. Well, uh, after what segment is encapsulated into the packet? And uh, if we'll define the layers, so this matryoshka is working on the, the transport layer. And this matryoshka works on the network layer. Additionally, uh, inform, uh, what kind of addressing is added in the transport layer to UDP or to TCP? This uh, ports. What for do we use ports to define define application from which application or service this information comes and to which application it goes like we define source and destination ports and uh, as you remember we have some characteristics of ports uh, we have three types of ports uh, well-known ports registered ports and dynamic ports and they are from 0 till 1023 and from uh, 10 24 till 49.151 and from 49.152 till 65 and 535 are dynamic ports. Next, uh, our packet uh, also will have an addressing as you remember from the previous slide. The addressing which is used is like an IP address. IP address is used to define from which network and host this information is coming and to which uh, network and host this information is going. And as you remember, so we have two types of IP addresses, 
uh, IP version 4 and IP version 6 which consists of 32 bits and which consists of 120 oops, 8 bits which will give you 2 to the power of 32 and 2 to the power of 128 bits network layer responsible for the routing oops, sorry um, uh, let's have an example where, where we have point A which is Almaty city in which uh, our university is situated and the Astana which is the capital of the Kazakhstan and by the way Kazakhstan a little bit about our country uh, it takes uh, ninth place in the world uh, by the territory uh, we are one of the biggest country uh, with the population of about 17 millions only the capital is the Astana city and uh, the ex capital is Almaty city uh, let's have a situation like this we'll have with you three uh, cars A, B and C and they will travel from Almaty to the Astana um, when I ask people how many different ways uh, available for these cars from Almaty to Astana people say much and some of them say like 10, 20 and so on actually there are a lot of uh, different roads uh, we can say infinity uh, combination of the different roads because the cars can travel by using different ways and you know it's, it's also one of the road or it can travel through the Uzbekistan and go to the to the Russia and from the Russia you can come like this or or the car can go to the China from China to Russia and so on all right so we have uh, uh, n number of different roads and when these cars are traveling uh, from one city to another one the cars are making decision by themselves uh, which road to select so every time when car comes to the crossroad car uh, so the driver is making decision will I go by using uh, left road or by using the right road and uh, sometimes uh, it depends not only on, on the driver I mean the decision making of the the, the routing uh, sometimes it depends on the situation with the road so if the the, the main road like highway is under construction so the driver has two variants or he will wait uh, till the end of the construction or he will use another uh, secondary road in case if we'll take a look for the same situation but uh, through the prism of the computer networks where we have uh, different packages which are going to travel uh, through the network and we have here in interconnection between two cities by the routers and between routers we have one connectivity this uh, wide area network connectivity so when packet 1 comes to the router 1 so let us say router 1 router 1 makes decision where to resend this packet packet itself is not making any decision in packet there are uh, the main information are like a source IP address like from which network I'm coming and to which network it goes so the network is the Astana as the destination and when a router will receive this information it will take a look for its own routing table in which he will find out the best path to the Astana and will resend it to the next router when router 2 will receive this packet router 2 by itself without the help of router 1 and any other external resources will make a decision where to resend this packet and, I, and actually it has uh, two different variants or he will resend it here to router 3 or he will resend it back to the router 1 in case when routers are configured incorrectly your packet can uh, um, can travel between routers and make loop so we'll discuss uh, what kind of mechanism prevents the infinite loop uh, in the routing so and uh, for example it uh, the packet del uh, delivered to the router 3 and router 3 is just resending to the Astana city where it can be situation like this. imagine that this is the shortest pass but uh, when second packet is coming to the router 
one uh, router one uh, understand that something wrong with this pass and it can resend it to this router this is going to be router 4 and router 4 will resend it to the router 5 and router 5 can resend it to router 3 so uh, and next when packet number 3 will come to the router uh, there can be situation like uh, this pass is already like like, like I told you example with the cars and with the road construction maybe uh, the situation is already fixed with this link and when third packet will come to the rotor 1 rotor 1 will make decision to resend it to rotor 2 and after what uh, immediately to rotor 3 so at the, the at the end of the journey there can be situation like first packet came first third packet came second and uh, second packet ca came at third place and fourth packet and as you remember, after what transport layer protocol will will uh, receive these packages and will make the capsulation till the 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 segment. And after what it will make reordering process one, two, three, and four, and will send it to layer number seven, which you already know this application layer. And uh, the network layer responsible uh, for encapsulation, and also it is responsible for decapsulation process like you know the the packet so if we'll take a look this is bit stream decapsulated till the frame and frame decapsulated till uh, the packet and packet decapsulated till uh, the segment or the datagram so the the role of network layer is to make decapsulation from packet to the segment and when it's making an encapsulation, it's responsible for encapsulating the segment into the pack. In other words, let's take a look for this small animation, which is helping us to understand what is happening um, while our data is prepared to be sent through the computer. So the data comes to the transport layer after what is segmented. From segment, uh, segment goes to the network layer. Network layer makes encapsulation till the packet and the data link layer is making an encapsulation till the, the frame. Frame is represented as the bit stream uh, and it is sent to the rotors. Rotors are making routing and after what happens the, the decapsulation till layer 7. And every time when your information is traveling from, from one host to another host uh, it is passing through all the steps. Well, we have two uh, network layer protocols, the f famous protocols. Actually, we have uh, a lot of other protocols, but uh, in our course, uh, we, we discuss only uh, two of them, IP version 4 and IP version 6. Um, some characteristics of these protocols. The IP version 6 and IP version 4 protocols are connectionless, so they are not creating any session before they will start to exchange the packages. And as an example, uh, when you send the letter to your grandma, uh, you go to the post office, you, you just uh, place your message to the, the post box, and after what, you don't know if the receiver is present, if the letter is arrived, and if the receiver can read the letter, maybe it is damaged or corrupted, and the receiver is not uh, doesn't know when it is coming, and the receiver even doesn't know that something is coming. So when you just uh, receive the message, it's like a surprise for you, usually. Alright, so and uh, it, it's the same situation with the packages. When the computer is sending the packet, com the computer is d doesn't know will it be delivered and uh, will if it will be delivered, will the receiver be able to read it or not. IP version 4 and IP version 6 is very fast. It, it really very fast, it, uh, but due to that fact that it's uh, giving you best effort with, the, with its speed, it is unreliable so that um, IP version 4 is not giving any guarantee that information will be uh, delivered and not only IP version 4, IP, version, IP protocol is not the series or the family of the IP protocols are not giving you the guarantee that uh, packages will be delivered maybe you will send 10 packages and maybe 10 of them will be lost but it is not business of IP protocol I, the business of IP protocol is to provide you a really high speed but who is the 
and there can be situation like you're send, sending three packages about two of them will be delivered and who is responsible for the resolving such kind of problems so let's take a look for the communicating communication process between computer A and computer B uh, in which uh, computer A is going to send some data to computer B and as you see here we have the transport layer uh, managers so they are represented as the managers in both of these computers so they are uh, connection oriented protocols before starting to exchange uh, information they they create a session they speak about the 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 window size it is like uh, the part of the mechanism of the flow control as you remember and uh, they decide to exchange the data and after what manager says to the driver of the lorry uh, will you please uh, go and uh, deliver the, the goods for example uh, let's say uh, a thousand uh, thousand bytes and after what so this is IP protocol uh, it is delivering uh, this thousand bytes to the manager of uh, of the computer B and if something will be wrong so if something will be corrupted during the journey a manager of computer B will will let know the manager of computer A that something lost and in this situation manager of computer B will cancel this lorry fully and manager of computer A will make one more time order will you please deliver the thousands of bytes and so on so that IP protocol is um, unreliable but it is uh, making a very fast uh, transportation and the transport layer is responsible for the management so that is why so if you are using the TCP protocol then you have a guarantee that all of your information will be delivered and if something will be lost a TCP protocol will resolve it and even if IP protocol is unreliable so TCP will uh, let IP address to do the job one more time and one more time but in case if your uh, managers are not TCP but UDP so in this situation you will have very fast communication because you your managers will not communicate with each other actually and uh, they will not be a they will don't know any information about uh, this bytes will they be delivered or not it will be very good for your speed but it can be situation with the unreliable so that IP and TCP when you work with the UDP and IP sometimes your face can be like this all right so that you you, you, you will not uh, receive uh, uh, correct information all right IP version 4 and IP version 6 protocols are uh, working with the different types of the media where the packet is uh, like is not changed uh, the structure of the packet is not changed uh, that is why it is called the media independent it can work with different types of the media with the wireless with the wireless and with different types of wires and with different types of the wireless communication um, sometimes it can be happening uh, like when you work with different types of the medias and uh, each media has its own limits with the size with the maximum size of the packets sometimes it can be situation like uh, the packet uh, from the the maximum transmission unit of one uh, media which is the higher it has to pass to the maximum transmission unit of the another media which has the the lower value like you see this is the Vin the Winnie Pooh the Russian version um, in the scenario Winnie Pooh uh, went to home to the rabbit and had the breakfast and his breakfast was very delicious and he ate much and after what uh, he he is not able to go out from the the home of the rabbit um, it is uh, identical situation with the packages which are traveling from the media uh, with one MTU uh, with the higher MTU to the lower MTU and here you can see the standards of the networks and uh, this is Ethernet standard its MTU is like this this is uh, classical Wi-Fi its MTU is like this talking ring the old technology and FDDI so uh, maximum maximum size of the of the packet size 
uh, what hap what to do with the packet which is not able to pass from the higher MTU to the lower MTU so we have such kind of uh, uh, operation which is called the fragmentation so network layer makes fragmentation to enable transportation of data from media with bigger MTU to the lower MTU so what we have to do with the beer this is the question for you and I have an example for you where computer A is sending information to computer B and uh, computer A tries to send information oops sorry I got problem with my battery I think that soon it will be turned off I mean this uh, tablet sending information to a, from A to B uh, computer A sends information from the wireless where the the MTU is 20 to 72 bytes and when the router receives this packet it makes decision that this packet is not be able to travel uh, on the next uh, media without a fragmentation that is why it's making decision to fragment the packet into two parts and is sending it to the next router so the next uh, the optical fiber media is is able to transmit the size of to uh, 2272 bytes that is why our fragments are bounded into the single packet and the single packet travels to the next router and the next our segments uh, I'm sorry our packets are fragmented one more time due to that fact that uh, the copper serial is not able to transmit such kind of MTU and it is continued in the same way so that when computer B will deliver this packet uh, the fragments of the packet it will be able to uh, reassemble them together uh, into the single packet. Now a little bit uh, information about the packet header. Continuing with the type of the service, uh, the field inside the packet header, uh, we may have such kind of situation like uh, this is imagine that this is the exit from the computer, this is PC part, from the left side we have the network part and uh, when we'll have with you the packages which are uh, staying in QI to the leave this uh, computer um, so they will have their sequence 1, 2, 3 and 4 and sometimes it can be situation like uh, another packet with its own status like is it like an urgent or we say the VIP so uh, it can come later but it can uh, go before all of them it's same situation like when when you are staying in the in the crossroad and you are in the traffic jam uh, you are waiting with your car in your car and there are a lot of cars uh, which are waiting too sorry for my drawing and uh, there is the spatial car with the spatial lights can travel before all of you okay to help you maybe there is the, I don't know the, the accident so that uh, or the the traffic lights broken so that this guy will help all of you to pass through this uh, crossroad uh, much faster the same situation happens uh, with the packages so some packages has uh, some packages have privilege to to be as an urgent packages to be sent as the urgent packages to help for the other packages it's like a control packages all right the so we have the packet links which, which is defining the, the the header plus the data uh, of the packages uh, packet and actually the minimum size is 20 bytes why because uh, it is the, the size of the the, the header so if you are receiving uh, 20 bytes or if you are sending 20 bytes of the packet it means that you are just sending the the, pa the packet header we have the identification uh, which is ID uh, which is uniquely identifies the fragment of the original packet so as you remember sometimes our packet has to be the fragmented and we have two flags which are uh, called MF and DF which are doing great job and uh, one of them is MF another one is DF each of them consists of one bit uh, and as you know uh, one bit can have 0 and 1 and 0 and 1 so when when we have such kind of situation uh, so that router 1 is receiving information from router 2 
and uh, when this packet is received and if the value of the packet mf is equal to uh, 1 it means that so and information comes like this it means that router 1 has to wait for the next pa uh, for the next fragment of the single packet it means that our packet being fragmented if next mf will be equal to 1 again our router 1 has to wait one more time and when mf will be 0 it means that ha ah, this is the last fragment and router will understand this is the single packet of uh, which consists of three fragments well and um, the what what is the the df the don't fragment uh, imagine that computer is or router one receives the the fragment from router two and it has to resend it to router three and when packet comes with df value which is equal to zero it means that if router 1 uh, will have a big MTU here and small MTU here, router 1 will be able to fragment this packet into the sum fragments. But in case, when it is required to do, but our DF value is equal to 1, so then this fragment, uh, this packet is not, be able to, uh, is not able to be fragmented by the router 1. The same situation uh, as with the beer. So we have to do something with beer, but it's not a, we are not able to fragment them. Why? Because if we'll fragment the beer, we'll not be able to reassemble it back. Because it is like a, it's animal, right? It's not just the basic thing. Sometimes our packages also we have some control packages which are not able to be, which we don't have any rights to fragment. All right, we have the sequence number of the fragment and we have a very interesting thing which is called the TTL or the time to leave. Uh, this mechanism prevents the infinite loops in the routing. So imagine that we have such kind of small topology uh, with the routers and here we have some networks like network A and uh, let's say here we'll have uh, router 4 and network B. Let's have an example that uh, information, the packet will travel from network A to network B and uh, so from A to B we are sending this packet to router 1, uh, router 2 sorry, router 2 makes decision to send this information through first pass, I mean through first interface or we can say this is port and uh, when this information will come to the Router 1. Router 1 has actually three variants here, here, and here. Where to resend this packet? Uh, if Router 1 is configured properly, then the, the Router 1 has to resend it to Router 4, but it also can resend it to Router 3. This is also one of the paths, right? And when Router 3 is configured incorrectly and the Router 3 gets three variants where to resend this packet, and if it, is, it was configured wrong, in wrong way so then our packet will go to rotor 2 one more time and rotor 2 will resend it one more time to rotor 1 and rotor 1 will do the same job and rotor 3 will do the same job and it will be uh, so this is classical loop guys uh, uh, and to prevent this in loop uh, to be infinite we have the value which is called the TTL when we send the packet its value uh, its TTL value is defined. Actually, we have variants of TTL value from 0 to 255. It means that we have 256 available uh, TTL values. And each time when our packet is uh, entering to the rotor and exiting from the rotor, its TTL value is decreasing to 1. For example, when our packet been um, sent from network A, it, it, its TTL was, uh, let us say, 5. When packet travels, uh, exit from router 2 to router 1, its TTL value is becoming 4. When router uh, re 1 resends it to router 3, TTL value of the packet is decreased to 1 and now it is 3. When it will come to router 2 again, uh, its TTL value will be Two. And one more time, when it is resented here, its CTL value now is 1, 
end when it will come here its ttl value will become zero and actually router one will destroy the packet it will not resend it to router three one more time so the ttl value is preventing the infinite loops um, by the decreasing its value also we have the field in the packet header which is called the protocol which is defining which upper layer protocol is working us uh, with, with us and we have the header checksum which is uh, responsible to uh, to be used uh, by the, the network layer to to evaluate if it is a damaged packet or if it is normal packet if it is damaged then the packet will be deleted so also we have the source IP address if we are looking for IP version 4, then this, uh, the, the field of the IP address, uh, each of them takes 32 bits. Source and destination, some options, and the padding. And actually, uh, when we say the padding, so here we have the, the segment part. As you remember, segment and uh, packet header. If we'll bound them, it will be just the packet. This is uh, the small example of the use of the packet header. Uh, why do we need to divide the network into the subnetworks? Because uh, large networks are difficult to manage and small networks easy to manage. Uh, it's like the rule of like a divide and concur. We have different factors, uh, three different factors of dividing our network into uh, sub-networks. First of them is uh, geographic allocation. If you have a network, uh, if you have some computers which has to be which have to be co connected into the network, and if their geographic allocation is different, like one city and another city, then it will be to create uh, some networks according to the geographic allocations. We have the purpose. Uh, where we have maybe the single geographical area, but inside this uh, single, even even single office, we may have uh, different purposes, different department workers, like an IT specialist, like a accountant and the managers. So it will be better to do, to distinguish them uh, locally with the different uh, local area networks to prevent the situation so that they will they will not be able to interrupt each other's and the ownership so we can uh, divide the network by the ownership like a admin part and the user part optimization of the network um, here is the small example of the actual this is not so big network and here we have uh, switches between devices and in case when one of the computer a wants to send the broadcast which which will go to the switch switch will resend this broadcast uh, to all other ports excluding uh, the receiving port and uh, imagine that this broadcast is like uh, DHCP discovery broadcast so the computer a wants to find the DHCP server and in case when you have the large network, uh, it means that uh, it's broadcast domain. Actually, this is, uh, we may write it here, broadcast domain. Domain is huge. So when you have big broadcast domain, then it means that you have a lot of uh, intersections between, uh, or we can say collisions between your devices, because um, your devices are generating much uh, broadcast requests with uh, with different protocols and it is decreasing the speed of your network it will be better if you will divide your network into sub networks to to decrease the the size of the broadcast uh, don't pay attention for this packet and uh, to optimize our network in this situation it will be better to place here the router so that router is uh, interconnecting uh, the networks and now if your computer A is sending the broadcast uh, message to this com switch switch will resend it to all other parts and uh, the broadcast array is limited right from here so that uh, it, so this is optimized network guys common issues with large networks are performance degradation due to the broadcast uh, uh, from the host security issues because uh, 
when you have big network it is very, it's very difficult to investigate uh, the violations and also the address man, uh, management uh, will be uh, will will provide you some issues in the large networks in computer networks we have a word which is called gateway what is the gateway what for it is used um, when you are uh, connect when when you are connected to the local area network um, for example computer a uh, and when this computer a wants to communicate with the devices which are outside this local area network and the our local area network is limited with the with the broadcast domain so one broadcast domain is one local area network so let me write it here So to be able to communicate for computer A to the, any other device uh, uh, outside the network, it has to know its gateway. So the gateway, it's an IP address. Look, that's IP address of router's interface. What is the interface? It's actually router's port to which you are connecting the cable. IP address of router's interface which is connected to LAN so this port is connected to local area network for all of these devices the, the, the file gateway will be this uh, IP address of this interface it is same as uh, imagine that you are in the room and you have your group mates or I don't know relatives all of you can make communication between each other but in case when you want to communicate with someone else uh, outside this room, you have to know that this door exists. And you, imagine that you have another room and here you have your friend. So you are A and he is B. If you want to make communication, you will communicate through this door. So the door for you is the gateway. If you don't know the uh, existence of this door, you will be able to communicate only with this uh, people and sometimes there can be situation like you have uh, two doors if something wrong will be if it will be broken so that you can use uh, additional secondary door or maybe it can be window as the fire exit but it's also one of the variant so and uh, in the same way we can have a second router which will provide uh, the functionality of the, the file gateway for the devices and maybe it's not the file gateway it can be called it as a secondary gateway so the gateway enable communications between the networks uh, if your devices are doesn't know about the gateway then they are limited of in communication only inside the local area network where can you find the configurations of the, the file gateway so if you go to the network interface card uh, configuration and properties you'll find that uh, you are able to com uh, configure the IP address, you are able to configure the subnet mask, we'll discuss it a little bit later, and you are able to configure the, the IP address of your default gateway. So IP address of the file gateway, here is the IP address of this interface. Uh, routing pa IP packets, uh, how it is happening? So let's take a look for the small example in which computer A is sending information to computer B, and both of them are placed on different networks so first of all IP packet comes into the switch and switch resend it to the router after what a router makes analysis it is uh, making decision uh, will I be able to resend this packet according to the destination IP address it is looking for its own routing table and make comparison of destination IP address with routing table and if the route is found then a router is just resending it to the next router and next router is doing the same operation and each router guys is making decision how to resend or will I be able to resend this in, uh, packet or not by their selves and uh, here we go Alright, routers, as I mentioned before, are using the routing tables. In in next video lessons, I will describe what is the routing table and what is the routing in more details, because actually our course is called CCNA, routing and switching. But currently you just have to know that a routing table is used 
to uh, for, for rotors so that rotors will be able to make a rotating and here we have uh, also the process of the rotating uh, in which a rotor uh, receives the frame currently we don't know what is the frame structure so that we can just skip this example so that in next uh, couple of video lessons we'll describe it in, in more details so let us just skip it out so this is the end of the lesson 4 uh, thank you for watching this video in case if you have any problems with understanding or if you want to ask any question you can contact me with this uh, email addresses or you can just ask uh, the question uh, immediately in the YouTube channel thank you for watching me uh, subscribe to my channel